I want to tell you what makes Jesus' mission like what that's unique. Number one is our heavenly mission focus. We are here to preach the gospel to every creature worldwide. It's a command, it's a commission, it's a mandate, it's a task, it's an assignment we cannot fail to accomplish in our generation. Every creature in every nation, kindred, tongue, or people must hear the gospel. Must hear of the love of Jesus Christ. Must hear of the love of God. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, unending health, live long, be prosperous, be rich, be wealthy, have peace, enjoy heaven on earth. That is the will of God. He's been paid for, and we must tell all this good news. Number two, we're here to stop anything after man's destruction. Sickness must be stopped. The devil must be stopped. Demons must be stopped. Curses must be stopped. Sickness and disease, poverty, every problem, all evils that Jesus Christ came to destroy, that the enemy is engaging to stop mankind from living the best life, must be stopped. We are here to stop anything after man's destruction. Luke chapter 10, 18 and 19. Jesus said, I behave Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power. Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So we are to stop every worker working for the devil to steal and destroy. And we are to stop all the power, all the works, all the weapons, everything the enemy is using to destroy. We are to stop them. Number three, we are to bring healing to the sick worldwide. He said, go, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned and damned. Now, these are the signs that must follow us because we believe. In his name, we are to cast out devils. We are to speak with new tongues or the language of heaven, the language of good news. <laughs> we are to take up serpents, confront and conquer killers, wasters, destroyers, oppressors, the wicked, conquer them, confront and conquer them. We are to drink deadly things, if at all, yet we cannot be hurt or harmed. That is, we enjoy divine immunity. It says we are to lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. The task of healing the sick worldwide is to the church, yet... Because of ignorance and because of lack of power, the world is dependent, is dependent on medical science to be healed. We are to heal the world. Even most people in the church are dependent on medicine. That's not God's will. We are to bring healing to the world. That is the essence of Jesus' mission and us. We are to proclaim liberty throughout all the world to all the inhabitants thereof. And to return or restore every man to his possession in Christ, to his inheritance in Christ, and then return everyone to the family of God, to the kingdom of God, to enjoy heaven on earth now. That's the reason why we are here, to proclaim liberty. The price has been paid. Nobody should be a slave to sin, to sickness, to Satan, to the world, to anything. People should be set free. And that's where we are here. Luke 4, verse 19. This is the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of grace, the year of favor. The year of Jubilee, the year that we must blow the trumpet throughout all the earth to all the inhabitants thereof and let everybody know what has been done by God. For man to be free from sin, from Satan, from sickness, from causes, from troubles, from problems, from everything that is evil. We must get that to everyone. Number five, we're here to make and plant Christ's ambassadors everywhere. To raise, build, and plant Christ's ambassadors everywhere. People like Christ. To restore man to God's image. And then plant the restored man as Christ's ambassadors everywhere. To do what Christ did. To live like Christ. To love like Christ. To teach like Christ. To speak like Christ. To heal like Christ. To cast out devils like Christ. To cleanse lepers like Christ. To raise the dead like Christ. To stop all the works of the devil like Christ. We are to raise people who are like Christ. Not like any man. Today, pastors are struggling so hard to make people like themselves. No, we are to point men to Christ and we are to make man like Christ. Say, go and make disciples of all nations. Raise people like Christ. It is sufficient for a disciple if he's made to be like his master. We are to make men like Christ. 
That's what we're here. And plant them like Christ to continue the good work on Christ returns. Number six, we are to enforce God's kingdom word transfer to Christ's ambassadors. The word of the sinner is laid up in store for us. Proverbs 13 and verse 22. If a man is good, in the sight of God, God gives him wisdom, knowledge, and joy. To the sinner, God gives a task to go and gather money, make money, pile up money that God will take from the sinner and give to the saint, the righteous one. Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 26. In James 5, 1 to 3, the Bible says, The rich have gathered and heaped up riches for these last days. God wants the wealth of the sinner piled up to be restored to his sons, the save and the go belongs to our father. We must take back the wealth of our father to establish his covenant upon the earth. For God our father gives us power to get wealth that he might establish his covenant, which is what our fathers as it is this day. It is through prosperity that his cities are spread abroad. We must reach the whole world and we need the whole money, the whole wealth to get it done. So God wants us to restore his wealth Put it into the hands of his ambassadors for them to do the work. Number seven, we are to restore all things at all costs and by all means. In Acts 3 verse 21, the reason why Christ died is for us to be restored. He must be retained in heaven until the final restoration of all things which God spoke through the mouth of all his prophets since the world began. It has been spoken. Now is the time to effect the restoration of all things, and we are here to enforce it. Final number eight. We are here to restore the heavenly life everywhere for all of God's people to enjoy the same, and then for us to make him available to all who will believe and be part of his work. Remember, Adam lived in Eden. When God made Adam, God planted Adam in Eden. Eden is heaven on earth, a place of complete bliss, delight, and peace. Eden is paradise. Adam lost it because of sin, but Christ came and brought back the kingdom of heaven on earth, which is Eden in the New Testament. Eden, heaven on earth. The kingdom of God is the replica of heaven on earth. We are to pray for it to happen. We are to ask God to send labor and make it happen. We are to heal the sick to make it happen. We are to raise the dead to make it happen. We are to stop every work of the devil, cast out devils to establish heaven on earth again for all. That is why we are here. So, in Jesus' mission headquarters, we are not here to play religion. We are here for every single person that is a child of God to enjoy God the best way and to live the best kind of life, living and doing all that God wants done to set mankind free from sin. That's why I want you to be a part of this great move because something is happening. Very shortly, the whole world will know that Jesus is Lord and God is God today. I bless you. May it be well with you. May you enjoy his divine presence today. May you be raptured in his love. And may you partake of the bounties of his provisions and supplies from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick, be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. If you need help, receive help today. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I release blessings upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. I'll see you again.